How Your Brain Works, Part 6, Imagination. In the last video, I presented the idea of an internal reality model which is created based on inputs from your multiple senses after the information has been processed by various areas of your brain. Your brain does its best to interpret the input and make sense of your surroundings. It is dealing with a continuous flood of incoming information from your senses, which it interprets into objects with attributes, and importantly, their position relative to yourself. Before adding more boxes to this intelligence model, I'd like to emphasize that the boxes do not necessarily represent specific brain areas or structures. Most of what we know about the specific locations of brain functions comes from patients with brain injuries, and more recently from fMRI, neither of which offers a very high resolution. We can identify some areas of brain function which correspond to boxes in the intelligence model, but beyond that we should consider any boxes to be conceptual, in the same way we could draw a block diagram of a cloud-based computer application where boxes need not correspond to functionality implemented on any specific processor. As far as we can tell, the neocortex is more or less homogenous in that we can't look microscopically at different locations in the brain and identify one as memory and another as processing in the way we can identify a CPU or RAM chip by microscopic examination. These diagrammatic boxes are for the benefit of our understanding about how things work and how they might be implemented in an AGI system. A box might correspond to a specific known area of the brain as with these cortexes. On the other hand, the 3D reality model might be a specific area of the brain, or the functionality might be distributed in many areas of the brain. We might make an analogous decision in software design. The 3D reality model could consist of an array of directions and distances with references to objects. This way, the directions would all be in a single array or area of the brain. Alternatively, the directions and distances might be properties of the objects themselves and would thus be distributed throughout the knowledge base. In software design, we would make this decision based on the efficiency of execution or the clarity of the design. Since the neocortex is a relatively modern addition to our evolutionary heritage, we could presume that here the simplest possible implementation would be the most likely to evolve. Adding imagination to the design from the previous video would consist of the ability to bring elements from your knowledge store and add them to the 3D reality model. With the 3D model, you mostly see objects in your surroundings, but close your eyes. Now you can easily augment your modeled surroundings with additional information drawn from your knowledge store. As examples, you might hear a song which is not actually being played, or you might imagine the appearance of a person who is not actually present. So this simple description of imagination brings up some interesting questions. How does your brain decide what to imagine, and how does it differentiate between real and imagined objects? If you are awake, you might imagine things directly related to things you see and hear. In a previous video, we considered a yellow square and considered that your knowledge base might return related objects which are yellow or objects which are square. If I mention an elephant, do you imagine the image of an elephant? Did it look like this? How about this? If you are directed, don't think of an elephant, can you avoid imagining one? When you are asleep, your dreams might be random. We could picture neurons associated with memories firing at some very slow but random interval. When such a neuron fires, its memory comes to your imagination without any relevance to anything else. Every so often a dream seems to make some sort of sense, but often not. You know which objects in your 3D reality model come from your senses and which are only imagined from your knowledge base. Even with our eyes closed, you know about your surroundings. If you imagine a person with you, you know the difference between your imagination and your remembered immediate reality. Further, with your eyes open, your reality isn't cluttered with imaginary stuff. Your brain clearly has a mechanism to deal with the situation. Without it, you would not be able to differentiate between reality and imagination, and you would have hallucinations or be delusional. 
Imaginary information might be tagged so it appears differently in the 3D reality model. Alternatively, your brain might control imaginary information by shutting off your imagination entirely. We know that the human brain is capable of imagination, and this video has presented a possible mechanism which could implement an imagination in an AGI system. We may eventually learn the biological mechanisms of imagination, and they may or may not parallel this explanation. The mechanisms of imagination presented here would be straightforward to implement in software, but implementing them with neurons is more difficult, leading to the questions, why do we even have an imagination, and why would such a complex process evolve? There must be a tremendous survival advantage to this ability, and I contend that without an imagination, we could not plan for the future or even perceive a future and a past. I'll expand on these ideas in the next video. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.